Hello, and welcome to Cats Week. I'm Annalise Poorman. At the Monroe County Election Board meeting on September 1st, Monroe County Election Supervisor Karen Wheeler brought up a concern with the amount of time it takes to communicate with late CFA 4 filers. Wheeler proposed the board considers a new system to curb any confusion moving forward. I'm wondering if we need to do a different kind of system. Maybe one of you know how to do this better. But it has spent, I've spent a lot of time since this was late, not just this one, but a lot of them, multiples, letters, calls, emails for the same person. And I don't know if we need to think about the penalties being differently if you don't respond. I really don't want to penalize people, but I think I'm spending way too much time trying to follow up and then make sure I make it, mark it down and respond. And I don't remember ever doing this this much before. County Clerk Nicole Brown agreed with Wheeler and explained why she was concerned with accepting written filing appeals. I think that brings up a very good point. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, she had asked if this was that candidate's first offense. Oh, yes. But I think that this was the concern that I had. We haven't all been together for a while, but this was the concern that I had when if the standard is going to be accepting a written explanation versus coming in person to explain yourself um, because it's not taken seriously. And candidate, if candidate filings are very ser a very serious matter. Um, and thank, first, thank you for the work that you have put in trying to reach out to that candidate. In the past, we have talk to the party chair for the candidate to have the party chair nudge them. Um, I'm sure that's happened. Um, I don't know if either of you would be willing to reach out to the party chair to see why we've not gotten that explanation for that. Because how many months is this? April. April. I, I think this is beyond the pale. Board member Donovan Gartlitz suggested that they establish clear expectations before the next election. My opinion would be to revisit this after this election cycle and, and set forth our expectations clearly. Um, and I think if we're not responding at all to requests, and I don't know the exact circumstance if that candidate showed up that day that we had virtual and was actually here, and I think that's a bit of a gray area, but if we set out our expectations and then people just ignore them, whether it is written or in person, I think that that immediately just moves you to the next category. And yeah, I, mean, I think it needs to be taken seriously no matter what. And I'm not, and again, I'm not being accusatory that this isn't taken seriously. We don't know the circumstances of this particular, if it would, if we certainly it came or not. Brown added that the reason the CFA4 meetings are held in person is to ensure the candidates take the forms seriously. I can give you a bit of background from my chief deputy clerk days in that my predecessor wanted those CFA4 meetings to be held here so that it was taken seriously. This I in an emergency can serve as a courtroom in Monroe County if something should happen at the Justice Building. And so she thought to have those meetings here and public so that candidates would take the fact that their filing was late seriously. And so I was out of town May, June, but um, I, re I did watch the meetings. And that was my concern as the discussion came up about um, a written explanation being sufficient. I see in that there's, there's got to be some accountability, right? And as, especially question. with all of the trouble, as Karen mentioned, that she goes to to make sure that you're notified in plenty of time when it's due, you're notified as soon as the it's over, the deadline has passed, that you missed the deadline. You're given opportunities. We, we've taken very liberal consideration for if it's your first offense, getting a warning. If it's your second offense, getting a stronger warning. To then, you know, not even bother to respond to the communications. I'd like to remind the board that we had one after the presidential election where 
he moved away and he just mm -hmm. simply stopped yeah. responding to us. This is a serious matter. And every candidate is held accountable for filing the appropriate paperwork at the appropriate time. If that is not taken seriously, what is the point of taking office? In my humble opinion. <laughs> Board President Shruti Rana supported Brown's opinion that they are being too accommodating by accepting written comments. Right. And so we were actually being a little bit extra accommodating, perhaps, by allowing people to submit written comments, kind of in part due to the in-person, you know, we were transitioning from COVID and everything last spring as well. Um, but it sounds like this person has complied with neither. <laughs> right. So, OK. Even even the more generous standard. Brown said that reaching out to individuals was a courtesy and not a requirement. I don't want it to be missed that we already go above and beyond, particularly Karen, this has largely fallen to her. It's been a, it's, it was intended to be a courtesy. And I feel that this could be mistake, mistaken kindness for weakness. Mm -hmm. And I don't care for that in as far as the seriousness of the late filing. Rana shared what she thinks they should do moving forward. Yeah, I, I agree. And you've pointed out it's been going on since April and it's now September, right? Um, and there's been numerous communications. So yeah, so, um, so in terms of, I guess we need some kind of motion, but maybe since we're still discussing, can I propose something like that for our next steps that, that, that you know, that we do take, take it upon ourselves to be very clear about the procedure. We've already, I think we already have a procedure established, but that also we take the step you suggested of having the party chair nudge the, the candidate, but that if we don't receive any kind of response by our next meeting, I think we should read the warning into the record so that the public knows that there's a candidate who hasn't complied, but also, you know, we've given them multiple chances to explain themselves to the public and explain what happened and hasn't taken that opportunity. And I think it's fair for us to read that warning at that point. We're not saying anything pro or con about the candidate, right? We're just Correct. reading the warning that they haven't complied with, that they failed to comply with the requirement that we think is quite important. The board agreed that they would revisit the procedure to ensure it is clear what their expectations are before the next election. The next time the board meets will be on October 6th. And we'll have more Cats Week after this message. I'm at risk of thinking there's just no point in trying. I'm at risk of looking in the mirror and hating what I see. I'm at risk of regretting what I do just to join the crowd. I'm at risk of being told not to tell. And you would never know it by looking at me. But with Girls Inc. in my corner, there for me every day, believing in me, showing me what's possible, I can be strong enough to respect myself and my body. To say I can rather than I can't. To say no with no apology. To be a leader. To finish school. To own my future. To break the cycle. Girls Inc. believes every girl can succeed. That's why the trained professionals of Girls Inc. are there for our girls every day, supporting, mentoring, and guiding them in a safe, girls-only environment building bonds that last for years and change that lasts a lifetime. Girls Inc. gives girls the tools they need to boldly face challenges, to resist peer pressure, to be the first in their families to go to college, to beat the odds. With Girls Inc. in her corner, every girl can be healthy, confident and resilient.
She'll do more than dream about her potential. She'll reach it. With you in my corner. With you in my corner, I will not be another statistic. I will fight for myself. For my future. With you in my corner, I will win. Fuel her fire and she will change the world. Girls Inc. Inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Welcome back to Cats Week. On August 31st, at the Monroe County Commissioner's Meeting, Health Department Administrative Assistant Kendra Mood reported that IU Health is hosting a monkeypox vaccination clinic on Miller Drive for those who are known close contacts, those who are immunocompromised, or those living with HIV. She said that the clinic will be open from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. For more information or to schedule an appointment, Mood said to call 812-353-3219. Next, the commissioners read a statement to acknowledge Recovery Month. Recovery Month is a national observance held every September to educate Americans that treatment and services can enable those with mental health and substance use disorders to live healthy and rewarding lives. Now, in its 33rd year, Recovery Month celebrates the gains made by those living in recovery. Employment can play a key role in, e in recovery and supported employment services offer new gateways to empowerment and recovery for people across the United States. Medication assisted treatment is effective and can be integrated into both treatment and recovery support settings to help people in their recovery. MAT services can be integrated into clinical sitting settings, the criminal justice system, recovery housing, and peer recovery support systems. Whereas Monroe County takes great pride in being a member of the STRIDE Coalition, providing the space for the STRIDE Center, an alternative to incarceration for those in crisis. Recovery Month celebrates the gains made by those in recovery, just as we celebrate improvements made by those who are managing other health conditions, such as hypertension, diabetes, asthma, and heart disease. Recovery is different for each person. For some, it is abstinence. For some, it is harm reduction. And for others, it is living through each day. We seek to end the stigma attached to mental health challenges and substance use disorders with the goal of making it easier for people to come forward when they are ready. We firmly believe that recovery is possible for everyone, every person, every family, and every community. Now, therefore, we, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, pr proclaim September 2022 as Recovery Month in Monroe County, proclaimed this 31st day of August 2022. And I would like to add, if I could, that um, today is Overdose Awareness Day all across the nation. And in the 12 months that ended April, in April 2021, there had been over 100,000 drug overdose deaths. And... In 2018 in Monroe County, um, we had 26 overdose deaths. By 2021, that number had risen to 54, which is more than double what it had been just three years before. And what we're seeing on the street is um, a really, is, is a, a mixture of a synthetic opioid, primarily fentanyl with um, a psychostimulant that is um, methamphetamine. And it's very, very powerful. It's causing a lot of problems for many individuals. So thank you so much. Then Highway Department Director Lisa Ridge asked the commissioners to approve various agreements for the Fullerton Pike Phase 3 project. Good morning. Um, this is for right-of-way acquisition for our Fullerton Pike Phase 3 project. Um, this agreement includes the replacement of an existing water well, uh, water quality testing and remediation if necessary, tree removal and a repair of the mailbox. Um, the existing well and the tree are within the construction limits of the project and the total acquisition again is $70,663.75. 
Ridge said that they had 18 parcels to acquire, and the parcels outlined on this meeting's agenda are the last ones to approve before the project can begin. Commissioner Julie Thomas asked Ridge to plant new trees on the property, if possible, to replace the trees that they will be cutting down. I would, uh, you know, this all makes sense. Uh, it, you know, the well, I'm not sure about, but that's that's the property owner's decision. But uh, it would be really great to replace the tree with a couple of new ones if we can. Okay. Um, so if that can be done, please do it. Um, I would appreciate it, and I'm sure they would as well. The commissioners unanimously voted to approve the agreement. The next Monroe County Commissioner's meeting will be held on September 7th. At the Bloomington Board of Public Works meeting on August 30th, Engineering Department Project Manager Matt Smethurst requested the board reject the bid for the Downtown Alley Repaving Phase 2 project. Yesterday we opened bids for the Downtown Alley Repaving Phase 2 project and we received one bid from Groomer Construction. The base bid was $622,286.83 and for alternate number one, there was a bid of $389,682.51. Uh, that was the only bid we received. That bid was substantially higher than what our engineer's estimate was. As such, we would ask that you reject the bid for the downtown alleys repaving project. Director of Utilities Adam Wason commented on the cost of the project. And I'll just offer a comment here. Um, we appreciate that. Um, that groomer um, construction did put a bid together um, when we were looking at overall budget amounts and such we're just we're not quite in the ballpark right now on, on on being able to fund those i did have a conversation with the city controller today about um, possibly um, looking at um, some opportunities to uh, break the project apart a bit and see if we can at least get uh, part of it done this year with some of the funding we do have um, but you know we're recognizing and seeing this you know, in a lot of different circumstances right now with costs on projects. Um, but um, yeah, so we can't award today, but we're hopeful to still get something put together for uh, this fall. Board member Jennifer Lloyd asked if the price was higher due to materials or if it was higher across the board. Smethurst said it was higher across the board and that the bid was three times more expensive than they had estimated. The board voted unanimously to reject the bid. Next, the board heard from senior project engineer Neil Copper about a consulting contract with Butler, Fairman, and Seafort Incorporated for preliminary engineering services for the High Street Intersection Modernization and Multi-Use Path Project. This project will begin with a conceptual scoping exercise, but it is tentatively expected to construct a multi-use path on the east side of High Street from Arden Drive to 3rd Street and to modernize the three existing traffic signals within the project limits. The project is included in the Metropolitan Planning Organization's Transportation Improvement Plan, um, and it has been uh, prioritized for federal funding, uh, approximately $3.9 million in federal funds for up to 80% of project costs. The city sought proposals for design services for the project, and Butler, Fairman, and Seifert was the highest scoring firm out of six proposals received. The contract for this um, is set at a not to exceed amount of $862,750. Uh, construction for the project is anticipated to start in 2026, but we're starting to design now to have time to get there. Um, staff has reviewed and supports the contract, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. The board approved the contract unanimously. The next Board of Public Works meeting will be held on September 13th. And we'll have more Cats Week after this message for hurting families in Monroe County. A contribution to, to children who are vulnerable and in need of an advocate. A staff that goes above and beyond to support and advocate for children in need of services. The web of remarkable people who are dealing with difficult situations. So many young people that uh, are in need of help and trying to find a stable family stable place to live. Without uh, the CASAs to, to make that happen, many of them would be unable to find a good home. I love being that voice for the child who can't speak for themselves in court. 
takes me out of my comfort zone and it also helps others. CASA means supporting our community. Being a CASA is making sure that your village is healthy and whole and that the children in your village will someday be able to help the village as well. A child who doesn't have a voice, maybe in their family situation or a school situation, now has a voice that can advocate for them. I really enjoy working with children that are going through difficult times and letting them know that I care about their future. We are privileged with our charge of representing the best interest of children. And so therefore we can advocate for exactly what they need without restriction, focusing on their best interest. I want to repair the world one child at a time. Welcome back to Cats Week. At the Bloomington Utilities Service Board meeting on August 29th, Capital Projects Manager Dan Hudson asked the board to accept a bid from Thyneman Construction for the Wastewater Treatment Plant Bar Screen Replacement Project. For the record, I'm Dan Hudson, the Capital Projects Manager for the City of Bloomington Utilities, and I'd like to request the board, uh, ask the board to accept the bid for Thieneman Construction to do the construction work um, of the bar screen at the Monroe Water Treatment Plant for $1,554,000. I'm more than willing to have some questions. The board unanimously approved the bid. Hudson also asked the board to approve a bid with Greeley and Hansen. We've asked Greeley and Hansen to uh, do a design uh, bid, a construction uh, administration, and an inspection service for the replacement of the bar screens at the Dillman wastewater treatment plant. That also includes two uh, electrical feeder lines uh, that need to be replaced at the plant uh, for 317200 any questions? The board also unanimously approved this bid. Next, utilities engineer Phil Peden asked the board to approve a rejection of bids. Peden explained that the bids had all exceeded their budget for the Fritz Terrace North Edition project and said that they will have to edit the bid before sending it out again. Uh, at the last board meeting, we opened up bids for the North Fritz Terrace sanitary sewer rehabilitation project and those came in about 50 percent over our estimate and that was all due to one line item within the bids that we had actually met with the engineer and discussed taking out and making an alternate uh, but but since we hadn't uh, and it was in the bid we have to reject all the bids what we'll do moving forward is remove that make it an alternate so we can still see the price and incorporate it in there but uh, we have the option to choose it or not choose it when we uh, move forward with the contract. So uh, to, to get to the next step, we have to reject all these bids and, and rebid the project. During the Monroe County Board of Health meeting on August 25th, Assistant Director of Public and Environmental Health at Indiana University, Graham McKean, gave an update on IU's COVID-19 numbers. Happy to give an update from IU. Uh, as you all know, we're at the start of the semester and with that, I've seen a bit of an uptick in COVID. Um, not really surprising as we just kind of passed the peak of BA5 nationally. And now we're getting every back to everyone back together again. And certainly they are back if you've been outside of your house or door. <laughs> and we tend to have our largest numbers uh, of the week on Mondays. And that's held true this week. And we've seen successively lower cases throughout the week. And I think that will hold today as well. And if I can say historically with COVID, uh, we seem to kind of peak out at the start of the semester in week two or three. So we kind of expect that same pattern as well. Um, and kind of where we are right now uh, in regards to COVID-19, uh, we did align with uh, newer CDC guidance related to exposure and isolation. And we are still providing and offering testing. Uh, we Folks could get antigen tests on campus or uh, we have drop-off PCR testing, um, saliva-based PCR test kits in our vending machines. And folks can use those for any style, uh, whether that's symptomatic, asymptomatic, um, travel-related, or whatever. 
Uh, we did reopen those labs on August 8th. Uh, we want to continue to promote that because we'd like to see more um, labs uh, samples being run, uh, and it is available to any IU constituent. Uh, most testing appears to be symptomatic based on the positivity rates, which are generally higher, and I'd say about in line with the national average right now. McKean mentioned that IU Health opened up a lab this week, which will serve as the primary testing site for monkeypox in Indiana. Public health nurse at IU Health, Sally Hudson, said that they have a nurse available for monkeypox needs. Uh, we have a nurse available on Fridays now for monkeypox needs if any questions or concerns or cases come up. We have had fewer than five monkeypox cases confirmed in Monroe County to date. And we do have systems set up coordinating with Positive Link to handle cases and testing as needed and vaccination um, of um, case contacts if needed. Um, Positive Link is vaccinating some at-risk clients, as you know, with monkeypox vaccine pre-exposure. And um, as I said, the County Health Clinic or Public Health Clinic is able to vaccinate confirmed case close contacts. Um, and we are pre-positioned with the vaccine for that purpose. The Monroe County Board of Health will meet again in a hybrid capacity on October 13th. And that is all for Cats Week. Thank you for joining us. For Cats and WFHB, I'm Annalise Poorman. Thank you.